one, it's Mr. Harland again for video number two of today. Today we will be talking about yet another Highwaymen from the United Kingdom because uh, frankly these are just fun. I mean I have never seen this many. It's it's so cool. I mean my goodness the United Kingdom sounds like a fun place in the 1860s. Uh, Boy if I was robbed by a gentleman uh, a robber, I just wouldn't know what to do. I might as well write them a check if they had that back done. But yes, yes, it's, uh... Huh. It is interesting how these things can happen. Which is crazy. It, needless to say, it really is. <laughs> and uh, kind of scary at the same time, but not really. But today, we will be talking about John Rand. Welcome to the swamp. Welcome to the swamp. Oh no. We are today we will be which has only come true at Freddy Fazbear's. It's true. Kids who have home birthdays have fewer friends and parents who don't love them. This has been another Just ignore the elevator die guy, he's a dick. He's very rude. But the man they called, who gave the nickname Sixteen String Jack, was this, was an English criminal and highwayman from the mid 18th century. He was a prominent and colorful local figure, renowned for his wit and charm. And he later came to be known as Sixteen String Jack for the sixteen various colored strings he wore on the knees of his silk breeches, among other eccentric costumes. He was born near Bath in Somerset, England. He served as a... Oh my. Let's see if I can read my own writing. For once, as a postillion to a local... Surprise! That's a job. I don't know what it is, but it sounds interesting. To a local woman, and during his teenage years, worked as a coachman in London. He soon became accustomed to living beyond his means, such as wearing expensive costumes, for which to attend balls and galas of the city's social circles, and was constantly in debt as a result. There he began pick afterwards he began pickpocketing with some success, eventually stealing valuable watches and other valuables from Hanslow Road. Soon he became a highwayman, and although he was arrested several times on charges of highway robbery, six of his cases were dismissed due to lack of evidence. As witnesses were dismissed due to lack of evidence, as witnesses were unable to identify Ron. Excuse me while I run from this chicken. Yeah, she she runs away after a while. But she's like, I think Gregory's outside! No, I'm not! Oh, this diner looks like a nice place. This is where they make... Cupcakes. Freak. I like how I'm just standing on this table and she's 
During one trial at Bow Street, while wearing an unusually large number of flowers in his coat and his irons, decorated with blue ribbons, Ron re ran... I keep wanting to say Ron, but it's Ran... reportedly addressed the presiding magistrate, Jer Sir John Fielding, saying, I know no more of the matter than you do or half as much when he was asked if he had anything to say in his defense. He was finally appre finally apprehended after robbing Chaplain of Princess, the Chaplain of Princess Amelia near Brentford in 1774, and held in custody at Newsgate, Gaol, where he supposedly entertained seven women at a farewell dinner before his execution on third on the 30th of November. Shortly before he was to be hanged, appearing in a specially made pea green suit adorned by a large nosegay I wonder what that is he enjoyed cheerful banter with both the hangmen and the crowd then danced a jig before being publicly executed at Tyburn at the age of 24 an alternative but unstantiated province account of John Rand's capture and given in Julius Jotting's NR4 relates to his employ as a coachman by one William Julius, a secretary to the then Prime Minister, the Marquis of Rockingham. Julius was renowned for his well-turned-out grey carriage horses, one of which was taken by Ran to hold up the Duke of Agril at gunpoint whilst his master was attending a London theatre. The robbery was unsuccessful, and Rand's pursuit by the Duke led to his identification and subsequent conviction. The jottings were written by the Rev. Dr. Churchill Julius in 1901, when he was Bishop of Christ Church in New Zealand. Popular culture, there wasn't that very many movies, but at least a TV show, and... Um, a production company or movies or whatever let's see a play about Ron's 16 string jack was a first hit for playwright William Lemon Reedy in 1823 a novel based on his life specifically titled 16 string jack was published in 1841 16 string jack features prominently in the English penny dreadful black Bess or the night of the road by Edward Viles in 1866 the production the production company for the HBO television show last week tonight with John Oliver is named 16 string jack productions which that's actually cool I never knew that but as always, as I finish these beautiful cupcakes that I wish you guys could have, because they're very tasty, I end this video today saying I will. we shall do this again next Monday, my friends. And see you Friday for the two shorts. But as of right now, Goodbye, everyone. For now, until Monday, next Monday and Friday. It's time for the outro.
Today we have a special shout out to the Glarer for his many amazing live streams and uh, for being a cool dude. He's a cool cat, you know what I'm saying, man? He's the MC. I can't think of something, but he's a cool dude and a cool cat. He's a cool, cool cat. You gonna leave, you stupid ass chicken? I'm a security guard. I may be short, but that doesn't mean you need to harass me every night. And no, I will not marry you. I think pizza's terrible. That's that's a lie, actually. I love pizza. She's as slow as Michael Myers, god damn. Bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum ba bum ba bum ba dum ba dum ba Everyone.